G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Caitlin. I'm an American living in beautiful Sydney, Australia, and as so many of you guys know, I am friends with Ashley Faye. She recently went to America with her boyfriend and is now back in Australia. And as somebody who's traveled back and forth from Australia to America a couple of times now, I can say there are a lot of reverse culture shocks that you do not expect when you come home. And I know Ash has traveled back and forth a couple of times now, so I wanna see what some of her culture shocks are. If you haven't already, go on over to her channel, go ahead and subscribe. She does amazing vlogs and she's actually moving to Melbourne soon. So that's gonna be really exciting for her. I'm so excited for her, I'm so pumped. I cannot wait to hear more about her new job. I can't wait to see how things go for her in Melbourne. It's gonna be an amazing opportunity for her. But anyway, let's react to this video, or at least like the brief and condensed parts of this video. <laughs> Reverse culture shocks returning to America after moving to Australia. Grab a Bicky, grab a cuppa, and let's get right into this video. So this trip home, more than anything, I realized how extreme the tipping culture has gotten. So I knew that the tipping culture has become a bit more, I don't know if aggressive is the right word, over the last couple of years since the pandemic. Like when I was growing up, I was told like, okay, if someone gives you amazing service, like table service or something like that, 10%. And then as Oh my god, this was so so true when we went back. I swear you would go up to a concession stand and get a bottle of water and they'd ask for a tip. It's ridiculous how much it's gotten out of hand over in the States. I'm talking those small little services that you wouldn't even think of here in Australia asking for tips. I'm not talking about like Uber Eats and Uber drivers. I mean for hairdressers you have to tip, the people who wash your hair you have to tip. Obviously waiters and waitresses, you're not expected to tip 20 to 25 percent of your bill. Absolutely not. That is beyond ridiculous. Asking for more than 20 percent God, no, that's, that's a scam. Like, I will always say that tipping is optional. I think you're kind of a shit person if you go and you don't tip when you know that the person's only making $3 an hour. But asking for 20 to 25% is absolutely outrageous. But everywhere you go, they're asking for tips. You go to Starbucks, they ask for a tip. You go to any chain coffee shop, they ask for a tip. You go to those little concession stands or something. Like, if you go to a ball game or something, they ask for a tip. It's ridiculous. Like, I remember once upon a time, it was just to subsidize people who had that, like, below national minimum wage jobs, basically just waiters and waitresses. And now it's like, even if you have a minimum wage job or something, people are still asking for tips. It's insane. Uh, number two, just the service industry in general is so, so different. The level of service, like, going off the tipping thing, on top of the increased, increased frequency of tipping in the U.S., I also feel like the service has just gone down severely, like the standard of service, which again, to play devil's advocate, I understand and agree that service workers in the US very much so deserve to get paid more. But also I just feel like in Australia, the minimum service standard as a result maybe of the increased wages comparatively, the service standards are just so much higher. Let me know. Oh, see, I don't necessarily agree with that one, but I feel like part of it really does depend on where you go in the States and where you go in Australia. Now, granted, I know Ash lives in Hobart, and Hobart does tend to be like a more typically friendly, open area. I'm all the way out in Western Sydney, where again, we're not getting great customer service all the way out here. You go to some of the more touristy areas, yeah, you'll probably get sort of decent mid-range service. But over in the States, I remember when I went to New York, the service was kind of meh. When I was in Philly, the service was a little bit quick and they could be a little bit rude and a little bit aggressive. But there were other places like, my God, we went to Houston and the person who owned the barbecue place that we went to, it, it was an absolutely amazing experience, unbelievable. So it really does depend on where you go. It depends on who you're interacting with. Cause we also had some really, really great experiences over in the States too, especially when we were in Philly. So it really does depend on where you go. It's very subjective. Next up, reverse culture shocks. Cafe culture, woo! Again, I've commented on this in the past, but the fact that in Australia, it is so custom in so many cafes, the barista brings you your drink and you don't have to clean the table yourself afterwards. Whereas in the US, most cafes that I've been to, it's custom that you go up and get the drink yourself and then you bust the table yourself. There's bus bins and some places even have like sanitizer bottles and cloths to wipe down the table yourself. And also to preface in the US has a tipping culture as well. So when I first posted about this, a lot of people- 
Yeah, that is true. So I'm not talking about like the Starbucks Dunkin' Donuts. I'm talking about like actual little cafes. So you do have to go up and get your drink yourself once you order it. You do have to basically bust your own table. And I know it sounds weird. They have like a little area where you just, you pick up your plate, you pick up your cup, and then you go and take it over there. It's not like you're full on wiping things down. There might be a couple little cafes where they give you that option, but no, I think that's a little bit too much. Personally, I've never seen one, but I'm, I know Ash has visited way more coffee shops than I ever have and probably ever will. But yeah, that's not a thing I've seen or experienced. There's a difference. I feel like Americans aren't as... Snobbish isn't quite the right word. They're not as particular when it comes to their coffee. Whereas here in Australia, some people get really, really particular with it. If you want to do like a number four of reverse culture shocks, like drink sizes, the amount of times that I would get a coffee when I saw this last time, and they were massive. And growing up, I had like no issues about it. I was so used to it. Even the last couple times I went home, I was so used to it. I'm just gonna say I miss American drink sizes. You get a little bit more bang for your buck. The drinks are bigger. I guess I know the drinks aren't as high quality typically, especially when you go to places like, say, Dunkin' Donuts or something. But I miss American drink sizes. I went to Starbucks not that long ago in the CBD. Don't come at me for it. I know. I was in the mood for Starbucks. I was feeling a little bit homesick. So I go and get Starbucks, and their venti, their biggest one, is the size of like a grande, the medium size one over in the States. I'm like, I feel so ripped off. <laughs> I miss American drink sizes. I know so many people make fun of America for it, but you know what? At the end of the day, it's a little bit more free money. So coming from Australia, I'm just like, I love when I go into a cafe and people look up and acknowledge my existence or say hello. I'm not expecting like a red carpet and someone to ask me about my life story, but I love a greeting. It makes me feel so welcome and so comfortable and just makes me feel heard. And I just love the experience of going to a coffee shop. You guys know me. And yeah, I don't know, I just feel like I felt like I left the US quite deflated. But. So I'm not gonna get you guys there's the video a lot of it's more of like a vlog and her talking about her trip and whatnot. So if you wanna go see it, feel free to pop on over there. But yeah, there are a lot of reverse culture shocks. I feel like this is pretty common wherever you go. It's not just an American thing, it's not just an Australia thing. Because in a lot of places, even though America and Australia are very, very similar compared to other countries, um, there are a lot of differences. It's like everything is similar, but different. Just a little bit different. And it's all those differences that will catch you up time and time again. I've made a couple videos about culture shocks here on this channel, and honestly, going through reverse culture shock can be really, really tough in a way that a lot of people don't realize. As I feel like once you live abroad for a little while, you all realize that back home is never going to quite feel like home. But because you're not from your new home, it doesn't always feel like home. There's some days where I'm a woman with two countries and some days I'm a woman with none. So it's very, very difficult to wrap your head around some days. Yeah, I think overall Ash did a pretty decent video. These are really common, well-known reverse culture shocks. And it's always interesting because even though we go back to the States and come back, it feels like every time, even if we're repeating the shock itself, there's something new to add. There's some new incident that's happened. But anyway, if you guys have any video suggestions that you want me to react to, feel free to pop on over on Discord and let me know. And if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button down below. I really, really do appreciate the support, you guys. And I will see you all in my next video.